Hi everyone, Jeff Simon here for Social Flight, and today we are going to talk about how the landing gear system works in our Titan T51D Mustang. Specifically, we're going to talk about the hydraulic system because the landing gear system in the Mustang is hydraulically driven, and so it all starts with the pump and the schematic that we're going to talk about here. This is the basic schematic of the landing gear system. And you can see the pump here in pink. This pump is bi-directional, it can, meaning it can run forward or backward depending on which direction you apply voltage to it. By doing that, it pressurizes each side of the system and that's what raises and lowers the landing gear. Now, if we look at the different components in the system, the first thing that we have, of course, is that pump that we're talking about here. And then the next components that are really important are the cylinders that actuate the landing gear up and down at the tail wheel, the left and right main gear. They're shown here in light blue. Now, in addition to that, there are two other components. Uh, if you take a look in a yellow, there is a manual emergency dump valve. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And then we want to measure the pressure of the system, and that's at these pressure locations in orange. So let's take a look at how the system actually works. In its normal configuration, if we pressurize the system to uh, put the gear down, it will look like this. If you follow the green Green, you will see what it's doing is applying pressure to the side of the cylinders that actuate the landing gear, again tail wheel, left main, right main, to push them into their down position and then the gauge uh, that you can see in orange actually indicates the level that it's at uh, for what kind of pressure you have to make sure that everything is safe when this is going down. Now we did make a video where we talked about the electrical side of this, which is all managed through micro switches that tell you when you've reached that down position, and that's what turns the pump on or off depending on how you command it from the cockpit, and when it sees the landing gear reach that position, and then of course we've got an indicator in the panel for that as well. Now, when the landing gear moves to its upmost position, you actually see the pump work in reverse, and in red, you can see the flow that goes to the same actuators and forces the movement to raise the gear until it reaches its topmost position there. And then again, those micro switches stop that. And then we have a way of measuring, of course, what the pressure is at that point as well. Now, Every type of aircraft that is a retractable needs some form of emergency landing gear extension. And the way that that's done via in the Titan system is it's a gravity system. Uh, the landing gear on the, the tail gear itself has a spring assist to help with that. But um, by releasing those up locks and then actually taking pressure completely off the system will allow the landing gear to fall and lock into place. It works very, very well. But the way of doing that is to open that valve. Now, if you see here in yellow, that is the manual gear extension valve. This is the valve itself that actually, if you take a look at this, it is going to be controlled uh, via a cable from the cockpit, and it has these three outputs. This valve actually connects the down gear side, the up gear side, and a return that goes back to the gear pump. Uh, that goes back to its reservoir. When we activate that, you can see here in blue, what happens is it opens the entire system back to the reservoir and the pump and takes all pressure off both high and low sides of the system so that the gear can just free fall into place and then lock in its down position. And again, all that's done from the cockpit with an emergency lever that, uh, that we pull that actuates that valve. Now, a couple things that are different about the way that we chose to install our system. We talked in the electrical side of things that uh, we installed a system that keeps the actual high current flow out of those micro switches by using a relay. On the hydraulic side, uh, 
there's a couple things we wanted to do. First of all, we wanted to keep fluids out of the cockpit. We're doing that with our entire design. We're keeping coolant out of the cockpit, fuel out of the cockpit in every, in every way, and in this case, hydraulic fluid out of the cockpit as well. This is the actual um, mechanical pressure gauge that comes from Titan. It's a great instrument, works very well, um, but it does require the fluid to actually come up to the instrument through a port in the back of the instrument. And uh, I just wanted to uh, do two things. One, wanted to eliminate having that line, as I said, come into the cockpit. But two, in the way that it's currently designed, um, in which it makes sense for efficiency, Titan designed it so that you're really just measuring your pressure when the gear is down to make sure you have full hydraulic pressure rated where it should be when the gear is in its down and locked position. Now that's, that is great, there's nothing really wrong with that. But what I wanted to do is be able to see that pressure in both regimes, to be able to see the pressure on the downside or down circuit of the system, and also see the hydraulic pressure that's on when the gear is being held up by hydraulic pressure. So you're just in cruise flight and you wanna see that that's happening. Um, and so in order to do that, it all kind of worked together by, uh, by putting those two things together of wanting to measure both as well as keep fluids out of the cockpit. Because our method for keeping fluids out of the cockpit when it comes to measuring the hydraulic pressure is to go with UMA instruments. UMA instruments, you've heard me talk about them before. I'm a huge fan, uh, I love their products. And their small uh, one and a quarter inch instruments that we're using in our center console have a hydraulic pressure gauge there. And that's an electronic instrument that's fed by a pressure transducer. And what we can do is that pressure transducer is something that we can actually switch that gauge between multiple pressure transducers if we want to with a simple switch. And so what we did is, as you can see here, we installed two pressure transducers, one on each line, one on the high side of peeping the gear up and one on the down side of pressurizing the gear when it's down. You'll notice from the way that these are installed, the pressure transducers are hanging down. That's an important thing to consider anytime you're plumbing a system for hydraulics, especially for brake systems, for gear systems. It's very helpful because the kind of the, the nemesis of any hydraulic system is getting air in the system because air is compressible, whereas with the hydraulic fluid is not and is what makes the system work. So we want to bleed out all of that air. We want to get air out of the system. It's very difficult to get air out of the system if you have a T or some other type of joint that goes up. Air will migrate to the top and there's no real good way of getting it out. So anytime that you're working with something like this, you want to make sure that you're setting up your joints, your T's, any type of sensor that you're putting in, hanging in this type of a position so that the air will actually naturally leave it, go into the fluid, and then be bled out during the process that you use to evacuate all air from the system and get just a pure hydraulic system in place. So that is why these are set up this way. It's not something I have to switch all the time. I could leave it on down, but certainly during the testing phase or any time that I wanted to see perhaps why my gear pump was cycling if I'm on a long trip and all of a sudden I see the pump come back on, um, the question would be, well, why did pressure bleed down? What is there, is there a leak of some kind or what's really happening? And I can actually see the pressure by switching up and down between these two things. So that should give you a good sense for how the system works. Hopefully it uh, pushes you a little bit more in the direction of being able to go out there and consider getting a Titan Mustang for yourself. It's a project anyone can really uh, do with, uh, with uh, enough drive to do it, certainly, and, and commitment, but it's, it's been such a wonderful, wonderful journey. And uh, uh, I, I would recommend it to anyone, and it's been life-changing for myself and my boys, Jake and Ben.
Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free Social Flight mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. It's all free. We have the Fly to Win Challenge where you can win prizes. And we have also the FAA Learning Center. Now, that's just right in Social Flight. You just click on FAA Credits within Social Flight, and for free, you've got uh, the courses where you can get WINGS credit, you can get Aviation Maintenance Technician or AMT credits. And if you are an AMP mechanic with an inspection authorization, you can use Social Flight on your own time to get your recurrent training for your IA renewal. So be sure to check all that out at socialflight.com. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe, like our videos, and until next time, I wish you all blue skies.